Buongiorno, I'm Wim Wenders. And uh, I discovered the music by Fabrizio pretty late. I must say, considering how much it meant to me, I'm really sorry now that I was a latecomer. But I actually discovered it in 1984 with the release of Cruza de Ma. I did not know his music before, and I got to know it because of my brother. My brother and I, for years and years, especially because I was living in America and he was here in Europe, we sent each other cassettes. Every week he would send me a, a compilation of what he was listening to and I would send him one from, from me. We had this uh, compilation correspondence. And one day I heard this song, Cresa de Ma, and the name in the little handwriting of my brother, Fabrizio de Andre, I did not know anything else. I did not know. I thought, well, must be Italian, but, and of course, it sounded Italian, not exactly like the Italian I knew. I didn't even know it was the Genovese accent because I did not have the record. I found the record, actually the LP, a few months later. It was difficult to find it. I was living in America. And uh, so I had the entire record. And I loved each and every song of, on it. It was like, it was a treasure because I thought this sort of music was not made anymore. I thought, I, because I love Jacques Brel, for instance, very, very much. And I thought nobody's ever going to write this sort of song and sing with that sort of voice and have so much to tell. And with that generosity and these beautiful melodies, I thought that was period in time that was over. And there was this Fabrizio de Andi. He sang just as beautifully as Leonard Cohen or Jacques Brel, as these great poets. So still I didn't know much. I had this one album. And I heard it over and over again. Eventually I also bought a CD. And then I remember I was traveling in Italy one day in a shop. I saw this beautiful cover and it was, there was no name on it. It was just this painting of an Indian. And I bought the record because I thought, oh, that's a gutsy album. I like to buy albums because I like covers. I bought the album and then as soon as I played it, I realized that's the same guy. That is Fabrizio. And. Uh, it became my second favorite album, and then, of course, I became very serious, and I bought everything I could get hold of, until backwards, and af and afterwards, everything I he published until he died. But because of my traveling and because I lived so long in America, I never actually got to see a concert, never saw him play live. I spoke to all my friends about this incredible music. I spoke about Fiume San Creek and Hotel Supramonte and La Cativa Strada and Sidun and I mean countless fantastic songs. I became sort of like a salesman. Any friend uh, that wanted to know what I loved, I said well, you certainly do not know the music by Fabrizio de Ande, and you have to know it. So, I think I turned on a lot of people to his music. But, to my utter regret, I never, ever met him. There is, I mean, there is such an incredibly beautiful sense of melody in his songs. And he is a one of the great poets of the 20th century, and that's so rare. I mean, you can count them on one hand, the great poets of rock and roll, and Fabrizio is definitely one of them. There's such a tenderness, there's such a, I mean, love for things in his, in his music, and for his places, and for people. And, and then eventually, because I started to sort of research, who is this guy? I mean, I read this incredible story about when he was captivated. 
And reading that story and hearing about the process afterwards and hearing and just reading it, as I said, I never met him. And just reading this the story of his incredible response in the process. He became om almost like a saint for me. And maybe that's why I never wanted I never really made an effort to say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna travel to Italy and, and see and see him because in a way, I was happy that he was that distant angel saint of Italian music. And of course, then one day I read he died. And then, of course, I started to regret that I'd never made an effort to meet him. And of course, then I started to buy DVDs and see concerts on DVD, which made me regret even more that I never met him. One of my favorite musicians on the planet, together with just a handful, Dylan and Van Morrison, and and well, as as I mentioned already, Leonard Cohen and Jack Braille, but one of those handful of great poets. And uh, I continue being a missionary and telling people about him, and hopefully one day being part of the great concert of all the great musicians on the planet in honor of Fabrizio playing his songs. Herr Wilner, I mean, I met all these people in the course of time who felt just as I felt. Like Hell, who is one of the great music producers of all times and who has put some amazing records and concerts together. And. I mean, one day I discovered Hell was just as turned on and just as much a fan of Fabrizio's music as I was. And Hell has this project of of organizing this concert. He wants to do it in New York. We'll see. And I'm going to be there. And uh, anything I can do to make it happen or to film it, uh, you can count on me. I mean, this will be a great day for all the Fabrizio de Andre missionaries in the world. <laughs> I don't know. I put Quello Cenono into my new film because it just had to have a tr tribute to Fabrizio in there, as it is the first time one of my films takes place in Italy. Couldn't do it without an homage to Fabrizio's music. And this song just fitted so nicely and so ironically. and. And can't even imagine the film without it anymore. So I hope I see all of you at that concert. Take care.